So this week I learned that Tad Williams, well, he found this weird way to make me even more freaked out about spiders than I already am. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another weekly update, the first of 2022. Yes, we have finally laid 2021 to rest and we can move along with 2022 now, starting with the good old weekly update. Let's begin like usual, guys, by talking about what am I reading? I'm almost done. I have almost done with Dragon Chair. And I think today was probably my fastest uh, that I've been reading some of this. When I got to, like, I thought part one um, th that everybody said was like really slow. I was really enjoying it. I think I went at a pretty rapid pace. Part two was the part that actually kind of was like, ah, uh, for me, that kind of was just like, okay, I, I appreciate what he's doing right now. I'd kind of like some things to happen. Then, then part three has just been like, just balls to the wall. Really, really great stuff. So uh, you can see I've got that like a little bit left. I imagine I'm going to be finishing up that up this weekend. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying my time in Ostin Art about as much as you can with a lot of the bad things that are happening. But guys, yeah, like I said, I think I needed some traditional fantasy. And um, this is some really good stuff. Uh, the big question I'm going to get is, is it quite like a Song of Ice and Fire like your brother said? Well, I got some other comparisons. I think right now I'm kind of leaning more like there's some glaring things. I'm like, yeah, I can see where George got the inspiration for that. But right now I feel like I'm kind of leaning more towards Robin Hobb borrowing a lot more from this story than, than George did. But, uh, you know, it's still early. Uh, so got, you know, basically three books because I count that last one as two almost. Uh, so we'll see. Anything can change from here. But I'm having a great time and I'm looking forward to wrapping that up and, 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 uh, and continuing in February. Uh, lots of good participation on that read-along so far on the Discord. Most people seem to really be enjoying it. So that's encouraging. I'm glad. I, now, now it's the part where I get to see how many people actually wait until February to pick up book two. Because this happens every time I read. Like, oh, I don't know if I can do one a month. And then it's, oh, I can't wait. And I'm going to just do them all. So yeah, you know that's going to happen from time to time. But that's okay. Uh, there's always time for you to catch up for the whole month of January. If you guys still want to jump on, then it's okay. If you want to read ahead, hey, do what works for you. I'm doing one per month because I got other things planned. Like how I just unexpectedly got this arc from, uh, from, from Orbit for this book called The Justice of Kings. I talked about it when I talked about the uh, most anticipated books of the year. Uh, the Justice of Kings by Richard Swan. I'm about 30% into it. It was one of those things where I was like, I'm just going to take a peek at it. And I read like the first 50 pages. Uh, very cool. Very cool setting. And like I said in that video, I hadn't even heard of this guy a month ago. So uh, the fact that there's this many people that are reading it, uh, I think my guy Alan just did a review for it. And uh, yeah, a lot of people seem like are reading it now. I think it, it is up on NetGalley. So uh, if you guys are wanting to get to it, I think you probably can. But otherwise, it comes out in uh, in late February. So uh, my plan right now is to kind of, uh, you know, finish up Dragon Bone Chair and kind of work kind of side by side with that. And, uh, and you know, that'll kind of lead us into what am I going to read? Now, like I said, I'll probably finish uh, Dragon Bone Chair tomorrow or probably today. I don't know. We'll see uh, how, how the day goes, you know. But um, I can probably do it then. But it'll be done this weekend. And then I'm just going to... Justice of Kings is just going to kind of be my, like, if I need, like, a change of uh, change of scenery kind of thing. And it, it, just so I can just kind of fill out the month. Because I, I, I do like to, you know, I used to read two things a lot, like, side by side. But I try never to do two fantasy books. But the thing is, Justice of Kings, I'll say, is it, it barely feels like fantasy. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I'll get into it when I actually do review it. But uh, I think that it actually is complimenting Tad Williams very well. And it's going to complement what I plan to do next. So finish Dragon Ball Chair. Going to keep working on Justice of Kings probably all for the month. And then I'm going to be starting the Never Night Trilogy by Jay Kristoff. I didn't expect to finish... Uh, Dragon Bone Chair the first week of January. I actually, because before today, I think that I was, I was reading about four or five chapters at most a day, and I was I'm gonna take my time, really do it well. Probably take me about two weeks, and then today I burned through like 200 plus pages. So uh, yeah, that third part just really pops off. But uh, this, I don't know how if this is difficult to read at all. I have never heard that it's difficult to read. I've heard some people be like it's confusing because there's footnotes. And things like that, that don't bother me as a Michael Crichton fan. I mean, he footnotes his book sometimes. But um, uh, right now, I'm like, okay, I could see myself finishing this whole trilogy in January. I don't know. Again, that might be funny, famous last words kind of thing. But we'll, we'll see. I'm going to start that probably on Monday, I would imagine, at the latest. And uh, yeah, reading that along with 
Uh, those things. I didn't mention what I'm. What am I reading? I did. I did read two Berserk volumes. I read volume thirty and thirty one. So I'm getting closer, you guys. So. Uh, like I said, I got six weeks to finish Justice of Kings. I don't think it'll take me that long since I'm already like 30% into it, and I've only you know set, only sat down with it twice now. And uh, what, so I want to finish Berserk's uh, at least this arc, and I want to finish Death Note before I start Vinland Saga. So that's a. Uh, it's looking like it's actually got more of a chance to happen. Now, I know I've been saying I was going to read those Berserk volumes for you know a month and a half now, two months, but uh, it's actually going to happen this time. So uh, uh, it's that Falcon Millennium Empire arc, I'm sure I'm sure you guys want me to review it because uh, I'm going to have some mixed opinions on it. But you know, hey. Me getting trashed in the comments, that's nothing new for an opinion. Let's go ahead and talk about this week on the channel, guys. I did go back to work this week, so things were a little hectic, uh, getting back into the groove of things. But, you know, it's not so bad. You know, instead of, you know, dealing with kids 24-7, I'm just going to work and dealing with, you know, those kids 24-7. Hasn't been that bad, though. You know, for a fact, when you take, like, 12 days off work, yeah, that first day, like, my email was insane and stuff like that. But these aren't the problems you're here to hear about. You're here to hear about the problems I have with things like wrapping up December. Now, uh, when I wrapped up December, it was just, you know, I hate to do it this way because I don't like to do a monthly wrap-up and then a yearly wrap-up right after. So I tried to divide that. So I did that Monday and did, or I think I did Sunday, and then I did the uh, the, the the yearly wrap up on Thursday. But with the monthly wrap up, I think it's a little more focused. You know, you give your book of the month and things like that. You can look at the things as as you know, just how things went over just that one month. And I, I always want to continue to do that because uh, again, I think it's just fun keeping you guys in the loop about how the channel is growing or not growing, or you know what is, what you guys like the most that month, or maybe if you missed anything. It's always fun to put, bring up some of those videos that might not have gotten a lot more views that. I really enjoyed making. I uh, did my winter 2022 TBR, and then I immediately picked up Justice of Kings the next day, you know, <laughs> and it wasn't on that TBR. Uh, TBR videos are always a lot of fun because it's fun for me to go back to and say, hey, did you stay honest on that? Uh, what I've always said about those is usually I'll add things, but I don't take things away unless it's like a weird situation like with Murderbot where I just realized that series wasn't for me and I just completely removed it from my schedule. So uh, I, I like to think I usually, that's why I do them a quarter at a time because my schedule doesn't change monthly enough. But the thing is, guys, is like I said, the reason that I've started to make some of the decisions that I made on the channel, no more rereads, you know, things like that, is so I would have the freedom to do something like pick up Justice of Kings on a whim and not have to say, ah, oh, I can't, I don't have the time right now. So I'm excited that uh, I, I've given myself that freedom, but I've already seen how it can get me in trouble. I had to I had to strongly resist getting that new Daniel Abraham book too, The Age of Ash. So I was like, I, I do want to start Nevernight this month. So uh, again, good problems to have. I did do a review this month. I did look at the things, guys. I know I haven't been doing a lot of reviews. There was so much stuff going on in December. I didn't do a lot of reviews. Uh, so uh, I wanted to make sure I got I'm starting to get back to at least getting one review of week and uh, this one I did the Wayward Pines trilogy by Blake Crouch which I actually read in October and November so it's been a uh, you know delayed a little bit but I was happy to talk about it, and I'm, I'm happy with a lot of the interest. A lot of people that had watched this show that did not know it was a book in the comments telling me that, and that's great. So uh, I hope you guys, a lot of those people said, yeah, after the first season, that show really fell off. I'm like, well, because that first season covered the entire trilogy of books. That'd be why. So uh, whenever whenever TV or, 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 or movie writers think that they can write better than you know best-selling authors, it, it usually doesn't go very well. But uh, in that case, I, I don't know. I watched the show after I read the book, and I was like, eh. It's kind of getting off task here. And then, of course, closing down 2021, which was fun to go through and, you know, look at all of my book of the months for the entire year and see which one of those actually landed in my top 10, things like that. Most popular videos for the year, the channel growth and all that stuff. Always a, a lot of fun to kind of wrap up the year and see how it's different than wrapping up a month because, you know, there's a lot more data to look into. And I learned that YouTube Tracker is highly inaccurate. So if you guys are using that app, YouTube Tracker, uh, I say stick with uh, YouTube Analytics if you want the actual real numbers for you other content creators out there. But that was uh, the, this week on the channel. Uh, like I said, a lot of, uh, I, I did get the review out there, but a lot of, you know, closing off the end of one year and, and the start of a new one's always going to have a lot of those, you know, wrap-ups and planned videos and what I did or what I'm going to do kind of videos. Seems that you guys mostly like those because you guys have watched plenty of it. So uh, that that's cool. That's cool. But we're going to try to get back to, to a normal schedule. But like I said, I'm going to be trying some new things. And that brings me into next week's plans, guys. Now, we will do one more of those kind of wrap-up videos. And that is, of course, the book haul. 
for December. Got lots of nice Christmas gifts that I'd like to talk about. And uh, I, I don't think I ever have to twist you guys' arm for a book haul. Uh, it usually gets a plenty of interest. I mean, I usually get, you know, the one or two people that are like, why collect books? You know, and I don't know why you're watching this video. But, you know, hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. But uh, book hauls, for the most part, are always a lot of fun. Get to, you know, thank people who sent me stuff and talk about, you know, hey, look at this. Can you believe that this spine doesn't match by like one eighth of an inch and things like that? It's always, always really fun to, to gripe about. Uh, the review I have lined up for next week is a Malazan one. I'm going to be reviewing Reaper's Gale. Now, if you missed that that uh, that update recently, no more spoiler talks for Malazan books. No more veteran talks. No more top tens. None of that stuff. Just standard reviews the rest of the way. I do plan to talk to Mr. Erickson eventually, and I do think I'm going to be doing a wrap up with some uh, with some other content creators. I've talked to to Philip and uh, Iskar and AP have both said, of course, they would love to do that. So I think like a nice roundtable with all four of us to have a nice discussion after I finish it would be like the big payoff. But outside of that, it's just going to be you know just the standard non spoiler reviews the rest of the way. Again, I know that's disappointing some people, and I might mention some spoilers at the end of those, maybe, because there are a lot of things that you just want to talk about, and there are going to be some big moments and stuff, but uh, yeah, that's just, that's kind of where we're at, and then um, a, a new idea I kind of have is when I, back when I did my video for best book number ones, is just on the fly in that video, I kind of said, hey, best first lines, that'd be a fun video. Let me know if you guys would like to hear that, and a lot of you guys said yes. So I'm going to be doing best first lines of novels. And, you know, there's a lot of classics that just about everybody's going to know. But there's also some personal favorites, I think, that I'm going to throw on there. I'm still deciding if I'm going to rank them or not. Because, you know, again, I feel like all it becomes then is about the ranking. But, you know, you can only get called gutless so many times before you say, hey, maybe I should rank these. So that would be fun for a video. And I don't know. I haven't had received a response back yet. We're trying to get all of our schedules lined up. But we are going to do one more as the wheel turns episode. We're going to be wrapping up season one. And we're going to be doing it in a roundtable format with the YouTube channel Heroes of the Horn. So I'm waiting to hear back from Matthew about when would be a good time for him and his partner. And also I think uh, Madison's been uh, dealing with some crud. you know. So I think that a lot of people are dealing with you know the winter cold right now and stuff like that. And I think that a lot of people are dealing with crazy weather and stuff. So I'm just trying to get all of our schedules matched up. And I'm hoping that can happen sometime next week because uh, I think that the, that would be the perfect time to wrap up the Wheel of Time now that we've had a little bit of time to think about it and uh, see how we are all feeling about it and what we were kind of looking forward to for season number two. And that's really all I got this week for the books, guys. There are some TV and movie talk things. We binged all of Cobra Kai 4. And guys, I know you think that this is hyperbole and things like that because I've said it in the past. This continues to be the best written show on TV. And if you think that that's ridiculous, I think that you should, I don't know why you think that. I mean, because they've taken Karate Kid 2 and in hindsight, they made it better. There's no way they could take Karate Kid 3 and make it better in hindsight. They absolutely did. I thought Terry Silver was amazing on the show this year. And I thought that was the most ridiculous Karate Kid villain of all time. And they've left so many things open for Cobra Kai 5. I can't wait. The guys, the way that they handle the writing on this show, it is handled so great. Everything is earned. Nothing is forced. And then you'll realize things a few minutes before they're happening, being like, I would really want to see this happen. And then, and then you get it. So it's like, it's just, it's not fan service. I never some people say, like, oh, it's just fan service. I mean, I don't think so. I really don't think so. Like that first season, it has some of it. But it never once is like, hey, remember that part you liked in Karate Kid Part 1? I don't think it ever really does that. And I wish that these guys that do the writing for the show had been the ones to do the Star Wars sequel trilogy. Because they have shown that they understand how you do a passing of the torch to the next generation without shitting on your legacy characters. And making sure that your legacy characters still very much have a big, big part in the story. So you got Johnny and you got Daniel, you got Kreese, you got now you got Terry Silver, you got all these people that are important characters and they're important on the show. But it does do all the younger characters too, and you care about both sides. I feel like if they had done that with Star Wars, I'm sorry, at what point did we realize that you don't have to kill off legacy characters to pass the torch? You know, I, I they, they've, they've done it perfectly. I feel like this show should be the blueprint. For all of those like 30 years later sequels or whatever they're doing, it's by far, without a doubt, the best you know continuation of a franchise on TV ever. And it's only getting better, which is incredible. Because when it, when it came out, man, it was like something I was like, oh, God, you know, whatever. 
And I love that first season. But again, I thought, okay, how much more story they got to tell? And I'm like, man, I hope this show doesn't go off anytime soon. It's so good. Only complaint I have about this show, guys, I wish it was longer. I wish it was longer. 10, 30-minute episodes just aren't enough. I need more. It's just so good. Everyone is so good in that cast. I love it to death. And I hope you guys are watching. I know Netflix has got like huge numbers and it, it beat Witcher. So, I mean, it's 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 a huge show for them. And, uh, you know, it was originally a YouTube original. You guys remember that. So I knew when, when Netflix picked it up, a lot more people were going to give it a shot. And I'm glad that they are because uh, that show deserves all of the accolades that it gets. Let's talk about uh, Book of Back to Tank. I'm sorry, Book of Boba Fett, uh, episode number two. And after episode number one, I was kind of eh on it. I was like, eh, I started to feel like that thing of like, this is like nobody asked for this. It's kind of the feeling that I was getting after it. This episode was really good though. This one was really, really good. I think the complaint that I have about the series right now is the flashbacks far, far outweigh the present timeline. The flashbacks are great. The present timeline is like whatever. It's just all right. I feel like the present timeline is just Boba taking his helmet on and off and everyone ignoring him and Finnick doing everything while he just chills in a back to tank because he's always injured. That's how I feel like about the present timeline. But the but the backstory is so good. I mean, this episode basically, guys, was like if they made an episode of Mad Max or something. It was really, really good. I'm loving all the stuff with the Tuscans. I think it's just terrific. And the action scenes were just superb this episode so uh i i don't really have a lot of complaints about it except like i said that that present storyline a lot of people are like oh who cares you know as long as they keep those flashbacks because I, there's lots of shows that have done that and they eventually run out of flashback and if they don't they try to force something in there like i think about arrow and people might laugh now but green arrow when it first came out arrow was pretty solid it really was but once the time once the flashbacks caught up to real time show just fell off of a cliff so uh, yeah, if they run out of the flashbacks, that's when it really starts to run into some trouble. But hopefully, uh, some of these rumors I've heard about, like, de-aged characters, you know, because they did that on Mandalorian, I hope that's not true. I'd like for them to try to start to try to grow this universe, you know, away from just Han, Luke, and Leia. You know, I would really like that if they could do that. Plus, the de-aging thing. I mean, I, I look at, like, what they just did for Spider-Man. It was pretty cool. You know, de-aging can, can work. But I, just, I don't want it to become so so... It doesn't, it's just not going to be special anymore if they keep doing it like all the time. I don't know. It's just kind of a, a personal gripe. But episode two, really, really, uh, the, the arrow is pointing up at that show. I'm very excited to see where they go next. I just hope that present storyline starts to get a little better than it has uh, so far. As for other plans, guys, we're planning on starting Yellowstone season four tonight. Season four just concluded. We, we just my, my wife can't stand watching. That's like her one of her favorite shows, and she can't stand having to wait. She just waits. We want to wait for it to all to be done. And just binge it like we've done the last you know three years. So we're excited to start that pretty soon. If you guys haven't been watching Yellowstone, man, you need to make it a point to. I know it's another streaming service, so borrow someone's password or something like that for Paramount. It's a really, really great show. It really is. So uh, I'm excited to start it, and I've heard nothing but awesome things about this season. And I would expect no less. Another solid, solid writing team. Uh, real quick, a lot of people have asked me what I think about Matrix Resurrections, and I'm going to tell you guys I didn't watch it, and I don't plan to. And I'm going to tell you why. Uh, I've gotten to this point now that when I hear, oh, it's going to be polarizing, it's going to be divisive among the fan base, it's the last Jedi of Matrix movies. That's enough for me to say... I'm going to pass. I'm just going to remember things the way that they were. Uh, I, I don't feel like any more of these franchises that I love need to be deconstructed. I don't feel like they need to be meta and looked at that way. I don't feel like they need to have, you know, present day commentary on them. I'm fine just pretending these things don't exist. Uh, like people complain about, why are they remaking that? It makes me so angry. I don't, I just don't go see it. So I think that's what I'm going to do with Matrix Resurrections because I haven't heard anything good, even from people who absolutely love the Matrix and even people who like this movie have said that like, yeah, it, did, it, it really didn't need to be made though. So I'm just, I'm just going to skip it. You know, that's it. I'll just skip it and I'll wait for John Wick 4. You know, I'm fine with that. So Props to Keanu for coming back and, and, and doing that movie. But uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to... I'd rather remember remember us like we were. I think that's what I'm going to do. And guys, that was pretty much my week. Uh, you know, did a little bit of Game Pass. Did this really cool game on Xbox Game Pass called Firewatch. I know a lot of people have already played it, but it was new to me. Uh, really neat story-driven game. You don't really need any skill to play it. You're really just... It's an interactive story, basically. But uh, yeah, really, really cool game. Great story. And then the way it ended, I was like, man, I kind of want more. And I thought that was a really 
you know, a good sign. That was great, great storytelling. So check the game out if you guys have it. It's free on Game Pass. And guys, got to get Game Pass. Game Pass is so good. They're putting Mass Effect, uh, the, the update, the Legendary Edition on there. I'm thinking it's going to be time for a nice Mass Effect replay. I might also be introducing my oldest to Gears of War. And we're going to check out some Gears of War. I think the Ultimate Edition. Very, very excited. That's one of my favorite franchises ever, guys. It's Gears of War right up there with halo for me in that regard so that was my week guys uh, game pass can be a it can be a time sink if you don't watch out but uh, what are you guys up to what are you watching what do you listen to what are you playing drop in the comments and let me know and i will talk to you there have an awesome weekend